ILC London International Live Channel Tamil. May I welcome our listeners to an interview we had with Jan Loji, MP New Zealand. Jan and Lee Rhiannon, Senator Australian Parliament, went on a fact-finding mission to Sri Lanka recently. The Sri Lankan government found their fine-finding activities irksome and had them chucked out of the country unceremoniously. This has shocked the world to the Commonwealth Parliament being thrown out of a Commonwealth country holding the Commonwealth Conference has drawn the attention of the world. ILC thought it would be wise to speak to one of them personally and bring the facts to the attention of the world. We contacted MP Jan Loji in New Zealand and here she is on the wireless. Good, good evening. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening to you. Good <laughs> You had travelled to Sri Lanka before the Commonwealth Conference on a fact-finding trip. Could you please tell our listeners your findings? Look, we were there a very short time. That met with maybe 30 people, members of parliament, um, some of the new provincial council um, councillors and human rights activists and lawyers and um, some priests. So we met with both Singla and Tamil people. And the, what we found was, um, was very concerning that particularly in the North the, um the army continues to take very significant pieces of land from private ownership and also from the local council and that they are using that land um, to set up business that they're running tourist enterprises and hotels and running farms using rehabilitated soldiers as labour, um, which cuts out their costs, and then selling the produce at the local markets at a cheaper rate than what locals can produce. So it's cutting people out um, of business and livelihood. We saw the... Um, the the entire press and the bullet shots in the um, walls and the um, burnt out press from just this year that showed that the targeting of free press is still very real and that um, they were very circumscribed in what they can report. We heard stories of people, anybody really who was um, raising issues of human rights or concerns with the government being harassed and targeted. Um, and we're told that when Navi Pillay visited recently, the meeting rooms were bugged and people were um, intimidated and threatened for speaking to her. That the recent election, so it was a fantastic result for the TNA, that um, still that the army had been involved in trying to stop people from voting and that a fake entire press newspaper had been produced, um, the assumption is by the army, telling people to boycott the elections. Um, we heard stories of women, the army targeting women-headed households and um, raping women and forcing them into um, ongoing relationships of a type of forced prostitution and that there was... Um, um, the lawyers we spoke to had seen a text from a general in the army engaged in that. In your fact-finding trip, you have had a chance to meet with democratically elected officials and civil society. Yes, yes we did. Um, so we met with uh, members of TNA members of parliament and provisional council and civil society. Mm-hmm. Clearly, you have a fact-finding plan to find the facts and you had the opportunity to meet with the people, what were their concerns? Well, their concern is um, that the state is becoming more authoritarian, that the people are still not free to speak and people still don't have access to an independent justice system to address um, threats and that their land is being taken and um, the government is moving singular people up into the north to displace. But President Mahinda Rajapaksha 
two days ago told the whole world on a press conference things are moving well and the development resettlement and reconciliation is going according to their plans what what is the problem <laughs> the problem is that's not true that's i mean and there's been so many international reports um telling us that that's not true um we'd heard that before we went as well and you know we were checking and and that is not true but um while there have been elections and that is a form of progress because it puts something in place that can be used later um they tried to interfere with the election the commonwealth said the election was not free and fair and all of the kind of structural issues are are going on so in your opinion you were on the ground and met with democratically elected officials and civil society do you think president mahinda rajapaksha's statement to the press were a complete lie yes i and and you know other comments he made i think he was justifying what's happening he was you know so i don't think his statements were entirely clear that everything was on track either you know i think he says what he wants to one audience and i understand that your fact finding trip abruptly came to an end can you please tell us how it happened um yes <laughs> there's disagreement about this as well we um we both Lee and I we applied for the visa that we were advised to apply for and the only appropriate one was um the a tourist visa special projects mm-hmm. um and a letter was sent to the Sri Lankan government informing them specifically from Australian foreign affairs that we were coming and what on and what visa we were on um and yet despite that on the last day before we were about to have a press conference mm-hmm. and midway through those meetings immigration arrived and um said we were in breach of the immigration act I'm sure you must have informed the Sri Lankan officials about your fact finding beforehand. Yeah. What was the reason given by the Sri Lankan authorities as a breach of immigration act? I mean we applied for the visa that we were advised to apply for. We did media about the intent of our trip and then a specific letter on top of all that was sent to the Sri Lankan government to inform them what we were doing. Um yes. You both were surprised about the behavior of the immigration officials taking your passports were you in any way intimidated and did you at any stage fear for your lives No I mean we and which is a key point I think because we had um diplomatic support there were media in the vicinity present and we were members of parliament we had all the protections that local people don't have mm-hmm. um and so they were very careful they were very polite um but the fear on the that the local people felt when they arrived and um throughout that of the people we were with was very telling and it was very disturbing in the joint statement you two issued after returning to your countries You have expressed concerns about the people that you had the meetings with. Have they been in touch with you after return to your countries? We have heard that they are okay, but I think it's that ongoing concern for, you know, when Chogun's over and then again when the human rights UN human rights council meetings over and then as the attention of the world moves away from Sri Lanka, what's going to happen then? Now that you are back in New Zealand and you must have seen the coverage of the Commonwealth Conference British Prime Minister David Cameron clearly told the media that he was going to shine a light has he in your opinion do you think that his visit has made any difference we were told by people there that things had been a little safer for the last 2 or 3 months obviously that hasn't been that people who just got out of prison for being held without charge it hasn't been perfect but it's been a bit safer so i hope that 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 may have made a difference just but just in the short term but what will what it will mean in the long term that now that um the president has been able to say everything's fine here and he hasn't been officially challenged by the commonwealth um i think is really worrying and i 
quite fearful that now as the head of the Commonwealth, it will be difficult, more difficult for the UN to actually take the step that it needs to get an independent inquiry. Okay, now that the Commonwealth Conference has come to an end, President Rajapaksha will be the head of the, the Commonwealth for the next two years. What are your concerns? Well, I guess I have several concerns. One, for the um, the integrity of the Commonwealth and the ability of the Commonwealth to um, continue, you know, to actually deliver on the charter and the commitment to human rights. In Sri Lanka, I people that we spoke to thought that with the Human Rights Council meeting in March, there that that being is still a focus and with international attention that there's the you know hope that things will be a bit safer until that happens um but the concern is that if the UN doesn't take action oh. and Rajapaksa now has this you know status in the world as the head of the commonwealth that Navi Pillai has talked about this growing authoritarian trend in Sri Lanka and and my real worry is that that's going to get worse and that people are going to feel as if they have no choices and that their lives are in danger and are unprotected and that it, you know, may... And that just can't be good anyway. Finally, you've been on a fact-finding mission and you met with the, the officials and the civil society and uh, you're going to be reporting to the, the parliament. Do you think, in your opinion, will the New Zealand government will take any action um, sadly the signs so far haven't been good of that our prime minister has um, I think made several rather unfortunate comments so I think it's going to take quite a lot to be able to get a change in this government's position thank you very much indeed for your time I really appreciate this yeah. We're very grateful for your efforts and uh, uh, please do continue with your... Yeah, we will certainly continue um, the work. Thank you for your time. Now, over to our listeners. We have been listening to an interview with Miss Jan Logi, MP from New Zealand. Let us all thank her for embarking on a visit to Sri Lanka and exposing the atrocities perpetrated on the Tamils in Sri Lanka. It was a dangerous mission they undertook and we are happy they have returned home safely. Let's hope the Tamils in Sri Lanka find their safety they are yearning for. Thank you all. Vanakkam.